Hey folks, welcome back to the old Jarhead. Today I finally installed a battery monitor in my Arctic Fox 990 camper. I got busy and I pulled the batteries out and I got to work. So without further ado, let me go ahead and show you what happened and how I got this installed. 500 amp battery monitor with shunt. So they provide about um, 18 feet of cable. I shouldn't need all that cable. The monitor, a nice <clears throat> shunt so that I can plug directly into it. I'll even give you a little screwdriver. And a cable. This cable will plug directly into the shunt and into this guy here. And I'm guessing that one must be a power connection. Okay, fun begin. All right, sorry about the light, but we have our main negative cable here coming off the batteries and it runs down along the floor you can see the clamp here that holds it into the floor and then there's another one over there so what i need to do is is remove those clamps cut that cable and splice the shunt in between those cables and that shunt could probably sit on the floor right down there so right uh, down here, back there somewhere. Obviously with all of the water pipe in the way, could be difficult to put it down there, but I actually think that it would probably sit fine down there where that cable is. So then that would be an easy install. Then we just need to run power from the main battery to the monitor we'll run the cables and everything up here where we'll install the monitor and we probably can sneak power off of something within this area here. We'll just play around with it, see what we can steal. Okay, thanks to that Wubin light, I got plenty of light here. So there's my shunt up near the hot water heater. You've got your battery positive, battery negative. So if I cut my battery negative here, I put my lugs on, land it on the lugs of the shunt on either side, and then we're in place. And then all I have to do is put a screw straight down into the wood. So I think we're in business, folks. Whack that off and go. We're gonna cut this guy right here. <clears throat> that sudden loss of light was the my woman light falling over because I don't have anything metal to hook it to. <laughs> All right, so now we've got our two ends. I'll fish this end out. <clears throat> Should be able to fish it out up here. Somehow. One that cable's pretty tight. Oh, it's not coming out that way, I'll tell you that. Can I get enough room to crimp on it down here? I don't, well, maybe. Yeah, I might be able to right there. First, I've got to peel back some of the cladding. <sighs> Nothing like working in a confined space. <laughs> That'll give us plenty, and I've got heat shrink to go on top of it, so I'm not too worried if I get a little bare wire on the outside, we'll heat shrink it anyway. There we go. All right, how's that feel? That's much better. All right. <clears throat> huh, feels good. All right. And this one should be a little easier to deal with. Okay, I crimped that one without showing you, but we got that one crimped and we got the heat shrink on. We got this one crimped and the heat shrink's on. So now we just need to route this cable back behind here and attach it and then the other one and then mount the shunt back down. So that's the next step. All right, folks, so that's where the shunt got installed down there out of the way. I think that worked out pretty good. And then the wires actually run up through here 
and I ran my positive right there, there's actually a fuse board there with power coming to it. And then the main wire to the monitor is up here and I just left it long and zip tied it down for now. Just try it out, see how it works, and then I can look at the possibility of shortening that up. But otherwise, I think that worked out pretty good, folks. <laughs> Darcy would be really upset with me if I did this and it didn't look good when I was done. Thank God for life post being so light. Even somebody with a bad back like me can put them in. We've reassembled the boards on the back there. So we're all done. All right, folks, we've got power. Uh, you can't see that too well, but we've got power. I just got to program it now. We've programmed it. And all you have to do to program it is hold this down for two seconds. Then it goes into program mode. You have an arrow up and an arrow down. So you can set your full capacity. Now LIFEPO 4s are technically full at rest at 13.6 volts. Zero is at 10 volts. Power off, I've set to 12 volts and that's 20% state of charge. Since that's amp hours, I need to change that. And so we want to go to 30% of remaining, and that's when the alarm would come on. Since it's 200 amp hours, that would be down to 60. So we would go there, and then we're going to go up to 6. And this one, 0. And this one should be 0. So at 60 amp hours, it will turn on the alarm. The attenuation we're not going to mess with. Oops. Okay, here we go. Attenuation we're not going to mess with. And that's the last one you have. So there's all your settings. I just need to check my full voltage because that's full at rest. That's all you got to do. And then you hit that arrow there. That's your return button. So now we have 200 amp hour capacity. It says we're at 100%. Okay, the book says that this 99.59 is hours and minutes remaining. Nice little monitor. The only thing I don't know is uh, when the light turns off, but we'll find out. It doesn't use much power. So kind of cool though, actually. I'm, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty happy with that. Real quick, I just figured out that if you hold this button down, it turns the light on, and then if you hold it down again, it turns the backlight off. So first of all, I want to thank Vetra for sending me the monitor because they did. This is not a sponsored video, but they did send me the monitor for free so that I could try it out and install it and see how it goes. So thank you, Vetra, for sending me that. Now, it is placed behind me to my right, your left, down below the sink ledge where there's also an AC plug. So I decided that actually would work pretty good. And frankly, from where I'm sitting right now, I can look down and although the light's a little bad, so I can't read it at the moment, I could easily turn the light on and see it or go take a look at it very quickly. And so I like that location. It worked out nicely. It's out of the way. And I think I did an okay job getting it installed. It was a bit tricky as you saw. I even got it all cleaned up so Darcy won't be mad about the mess. <laughs> we were talking about worried about rats and mice at the cabin and she said, well, it looks like a rat got into the camper. And I started laughing and I knew exactly what she was talking about. It was all the tools and stuff I had strewn all over the place to do this install. But I have to tell you, the install was actually very easy. So if you've got an Arctic Fox 990 camper or anything similar to that, it really wasn't that hard. And overall, I have to say, I'm pretty happy with it. So again, thanks Vetra for sending that to me. And thank you for watching the video, folks. I really do appreciate it. And here's another one right here for you to check out. Y'all have a great day. The old jar head out.